Woo! Welcome to All Caps. Woo! Woo! Oh, let's return to the digestive tract of the take a peed. It's Kevin Durant versus Shannon Sharp. There's no other way to put it. Kevin Durant calling out Shannon Sharp for making up a quote of his on his show with a leathery lizard man, Skip Bayless. Better than even LeBron James, but very few people were willing to go there. And then he like, because he said it, if LeBron James is the GOAT, I beat the GOAT twice and hit the shots in his building, what does that make me? It wasn't about what I would- I love when they show Skip here and Skip is like doing his little like lizard thing, like looking for the sun so that he could like warm his, warm his body. And he's just like, y'all drunk uncle out here lying again. When did I say this, Shannon Sharp? Clearly, like, Kevin Durant didn't actually say that thing. It continued. Here is Shannon Sharp. Y'all remember the fake account when KD said, now everybody want to play for the Heat and the Lakers, let's go back to being competitive and going at these peoples, then joins a 73-9 and nine Warriors and builds a Nets into a superpower with Kyrie and Harden. Oh my god. Okay, Shannon. Anyway, and then uh, KD uh, snaps back. Old Shannon refuses to respond to me. Yo, Shannon, why are you using your platform to push these fake quotes about me? Oh, and then finally, uh, what happens is uh, Shannon Sharp blocked KD. He blocked him. Now, this is smart on Shannon's part, because in warfare, you want to fight on your own prepared ground. You want to fight where you are the strongest, where you know the terrain. Kevin Durant, his realm is social media, is Twitter. Shannon trying to fight Kevin Durant on social media, that's like uh, trying to fight Aquaman underwater. You're not, it's, you're going to lose. And so Shannon did the smart thing, the business decision, which is uh, he blocked him, and this will all end up with a producer, as I'm sure has already happened, reaching out to KD and saying, hey, uh, do you want to come on Undisputed with uh, Shannon and leathery lizard man Skip Bayless and like talk about your problems? <laughs> Let's just look at some great moments for Skip Bayless's career. This is when Skip, as you may recall, wanted to show everybody that he was still in shape, like after quarantine stuff, he's still working out. And here he is with his shirt off and his egg shoot showing and his removable tail. This tail, if he gets it caught in anything, it, w it will grow back. It has also been noted that KD has now more tweets than points, than career points. <laughs> Uh, he has 23,561 career points. He's after going off the other night, after sitting out numerous games, he's crushing people online and he's crushing people on the court. And he has 24,200 tweets. It's impressive. Now, where does this take us with the take a -peed? Last week, we allowed you to see the structure of the take a -peed, how content moves and cycles through different entities that have their intakes stapled to the outtakes of other entities and how that uh, content just cycles through that particular ecosystem. Kevin Durant in the take a -peed, is a closed loop take a -peed system. He creates the content, he talks about the content, and he can eject other people like like Shannon Sharp and the lizard Skip Bayless from his take digestive system. Shannon Sharp cannot enter the KD take without Kevin Durant eating him whole and swallowing him and digesting him inside the take We should also note that part of Kevin Durant's online uh, conversations included homophobic uh, language that he used to insult the actor Michael Rappaport, whose work was uh, last seen on, actually, was it on Undisputed? Yes, uh, the last place he's Okay. The yeah. actor. I was going to say Friends season two. Friends season two, Justified season four, and Undisputed last week's star Michael Rappaport, and that we uh, absolutely reject those comments. That was bad. Don't do that again, Katie. That was terrible. Like, what's the upside of DMing with Michael Rappaport? You get inside information about, like, Friends Season 2? Like, who cares? So, uh, recently, the Take Line YouTube channel ran a poll that was not cleared with me. I did not clear this text. I did not clear the idea. I don't know who did this, but the prompt is, do you think Kevin Durant is sensitive? And he, you can see the stats here. Maybe he's sensitive. We don't we want guys to be more in touch with their feelings? Like, don't we want that? Well, why are we sending this mixed, these mixed messages that like on the one hand, the platonic ideal of the athlete is you push all your emotions down to the point where if you cry when you get eliminated from the playoffs, you are a bitch and you just need to dominate and be mean to everyone. But then on the other hand, we say, oh, like guys just need to like, is, are, are men okay? Like, are they in touch with their feelings? Do they like, Cameron Durant's in touch with his feelings. He gets annoyed. If you prick him, doth he not bleed? I wrote that, by the way. 
he reacted to criticism in a way that normal people, everyday people, probably would react if like hundreds of thousands of people were tweeting at them every day calling them soft or criticizing them when they're actually doing a great job at their actual job. And let me just say another thing about Katie is soft because he joined at 73 and 9 Warriors team. Do you know what's going to happen in 5, 6, 10 years? All the context will melt away and all we will know about Kevin Durant is that he is a guy that has won multiple titles and was one of the greatest players who ever played. Nobody will give a shit anymore. People shit on LeBron for years about the decision and guess what? Then he won uh, two in Miami and then one and one in Cleveland and then won another one in LA and nobody fucking talks about it anymore. Now it's KD is the big problem. As soon as KD wins another one or is retires with multiple championships that he's already won, nobody will care. Nobody will fucking give a shit. Then we, we, we will move on to like making fun of Russell Westbrook for never winning one. Shouts to Stephen A. Smith. You created, you're on that fucking corner. You created that. Let's go to the meet where we're debuting our new game show. Stay in your Welcome, folks, to Stay In Your Lane. Listen, it's a complicated world. It's a technical world. Um, a lot of expertise out there. But do you have them? Do you necessarily have them? If you don't, you need to stay in your lane. First up, Jamal Murray's ACL injury. Does anybody have any opinions? Carlton. Yeah, Jason. I mean, it's such a bummer because he was playing so well. Um, you know, he's very key part of what the Nuggets are doing. And, you know, just as a producer, I'm also wondering if the shortened season affects, you know, the wear and tear on ACL, which is connected to the femur and the tibia. Sorry, uh, Carlton, you are not a medical doctor. I'm sorry, you need to. Stay in your Next up, Kevin Durant and his co-entrepreneur Rich Kleinman made an early investment in the trading platform Coinbase when it was valued at $1.6 billion today. Folks, it's going public at an estimated $100 billion valuation. Caroline. That's great. So happy for them. Like, truly. But is this crypto market here to stay or just another investment that- Hold on, hold on. That could have been an early horn. Let me just ask, do you have any money invested in crypto or alternative currencies at all? No. And you come by your expertise how? Well, I listened to this podcast once. Caroline. Stay in your name. Final question, folks. Recently, Kyrie Irving and Dennis Schroeder were ejected from a game that the Lakers won versus the Brooklyn Nets. It later emerged that uh, Kyrie took exception to the way Dennis addressed him using a word that the black community has largely repurposed to mean various things. Uh, anybody have any opinions on this? Well, totally incorrect. Stay in your Let's go to the scroll. Woo! Here is OKC's uh, social media crew with a great tweet about Lugens Dort, who scored 42 points in a loss against the Utah Jazz the other night. Cut my life into pieces. This is my Lugens Dort. Cut my team into pieces. I've reached my Lug. Wait. Wait, sorry. <laughs> Let me try it again. Cut my team into pieces. I'll reach my Luke and Dort. Canadian, no, he's Haitian. Don't give a fuck if the team sucks tanking. Sam, do you even call if he's... <sighs> fuck. Okay, I'm gonna do a... All right, I'm gonna try it one more time. Cut my team into pieces. I'll reach my Luke and Dort. Canadian, and he's Haitian. Don't give a fuck if the team sucks tanking. Sam, do you even care if he's scoring? Would it be wrong? Would it be right? If he went undrafted, chances are that he might. Me and Puku out of sight. And he's scoring 42 tonight. I'm a roach to some tricky, some tricky shit. I love it. Good job. Here is a, here is a clip that a lot of places have talked about. It's Luka Doncic, who used to play for Real Madrid. Here he is doing keepy uppies. Bop, bop, bop. Still a, still a thick boy, huh? Can we talk about that? Uh, off the shoulder, catches it, and then hits it. Now, NBA players, lots of them have played soccer. Many of them do keepy-uppies and different tricks all the time. But, like, let's just be real about what he's doing here. He did the keepy-uppies to, I would say, like, seven or eight feet outside of the court, like, beyond the corner, in back of the basket, and then hits a three. 
I tweeted like, this is insane when I saw this clip. And then somebody else was like, oh, Pascal Siakam does this all the time. Pascal Siakam has not ever done that. The shot is that it's the shot. It's he's like behind the basket. He's eight feet off the court. Do we know how much Can we be impressed? this though? Can we be impressed by this at all? Doesn't impress me. Mute Carlton's mic. That's enough. The negative. Mute it. Of course he practices it. What do you mean, does he practice this? No, he just like fell out of bed and then has the ability to do keepy uppies and hit a fucking 33 foot shot. I like it. I actually love it. I just think that that's incredible. Like that's how good professional athletes are. They're that good. Gotta get it in. Here's Luca. Gets it away. It's gone. Are you not entertained? Here's Luka. Are you not entertained? Let's talk about cryptic tweets. I love cryptic tweets. There is a direct correlation between the importance of relationships, personal relationships to one's career and cryptic tweets. They meet like right here at the apex, right? If you have a job that it doesn't matter what anybody thinks or that you don't need anybody to like you or respect you or anything, you just be like, yo, fuck everybody, eat shit. But if you have a job where it's like, maybe the producer could make you look like a schmuck or like a lawyer could just like lose your your contract, then you have to do stuff like this. Kendrick Perkins, it's not the stab in the back that kills you. It's when you turn around and see who's holding the knife. Isn't it the stab though that actually does kill you? <laughs> that's the thing that's going into your body and interrupting like your your blood flow in your organs, right? This sounds like a Sex in the City VO spec script. Like this sounds like a Carrie Bradshaw VO. It's not the stab in the back that kills you. It's when you turn around and see who's holding the knife. I am going to like it because I think it's important. I think it's important to understand where cryptic tweets come from, but also like, are you good? Are we good, Perk? Magic starting line. <laughs> So here's Michael Carter-Williams, who has been lifting a lot. We should mention that. Dwayne Bacon, tastiest name in the NBA. James Ennis, who's just like, yo, fuck it. Vooch is gone. Fucking, I'm out. I'm like not doing this anymore. Chumo Okeke, and then Wendell Carter Jr., who uh, is a very nice young man. I love it. I think <laughs> this is great. I just love that they ran it, too. Like, fucking, what's happening? And then uh, Orlando Magic, just the social, the entire organization from top to bottom, having a shaky week. Here they are, Orlando Magic, without looking. Our defensive rate in this season is 113.4, our season highest in franchise history. Which season did we have the highest defensive rate? So the thing here, for those of you who aren't uh, up to date in with like advanced stats, is with defensive rating, what you want is a lower number. Because the lower the number, that means the less points that your opponent is scoring against you per 100 possessions. So if this is your highest in franchise history, that means you right now are the worst defensive team that you have ever been in the history of the Orlando Magic. <laughs> Which is probably why James Edison was just like, I don't want to be here. I dislike it in terms of it's a mistake, but I like it in the sense of, hey, isn't this a chance for us to grow? and learn. James Ennis wasn't in the lineup graphic. Guess what? Next time, put him in. Uh, we learned about defensive rating. It lower, better, higher, worse. Offensive rating, higher, better, lower, worse. And we are gonna be better next time and every day is a chance to get better at it. Um, shouts to the Orlando Magic social team. New owner just dropped A-Rod with an A-bomb. He has struck a deal, or finalizing a deal to purchase the Minnesota Timberwolves from Glenn Taylor. He's doing that with the backing of billionaire Mark Lore. You know you've accomplished something in your life when they don't even talk about what your job is. It's just like how much money you have. Anthony Edwards was recently asked about it on Zoom. Are you an A-Rod fan at all growing up or anything like that? What you think about what he might bring to the team? A fan? What do you mean? Like, who is he? The baseball player? Alex Rodriguez? Yeah, no, nah, I don't know who that is. First of all, Anthony Edwards, I love his personality. I could watch him do interviews literally all day. I love the fact that he's doing the thing that everybody does when they get on a Zoom call before other people get on, which is like, they do shit like, they're just like. And then someone comes on, you're just like, oh, hi, what's up? Yeah, sorry about that. How are you? I just want to unpack this. Anthony Edwards doesn't know anything about baseball. Here is Anthony Edwards. I used to play baseball when I was young. Yeah, it'd be hot. Wait, what? Hold on, what? I could have went to the MLB. I played pitcher, shortstop, 
third base, and center field. So Andy Edwards doesn't know about baseball, but also could have made the MLB, was apparently like a five-star recruit, pitcher, third base, shortstop, and batted cleanup, but does not know Alex Rodriguez. Now, I think that he's being sincere. Anthony Edwards strikes me as a guy who is just like good at sports and is not particularly interested in the history of like sports art. If you were like a James Naismith, ever heard of him? He'd be like, no, who, who the fuck is that? Kareem? Don't know. Never heard of him. I think that Anthony Edwards is just a fantastic personality. I think it's great. Sam, do you even care if I'm scoring? Would it be wrong? Would it be right? If he went undrafted? Oh, fuck. I messed up the rhythm. Into pieces. My Luke and Tort. Can they, oh, hold on. Let me, do it. Let me try one more time. Cut my team into pieces. Oh, I did it. I did it late again. Cut my life into pieces. Oh, I gotta do my team. Sorry. Cut my team into pieces. This is my Lugans Dort. Yeah. Fuck. Canadian. He's Haitian. Don't give a fuck if the team sucks tanking. That's good. That's good. That's good. We did it, Joe. Sam, do you even care we if I'm screaming? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs>